What does it mean to be a woman in Canada? It means that you have access to high quality education and job opportunities, access to birth control and abortion. If I was leading Canada, I would ensure parity into government and decision making. I would also make sure to provide every woman access to daycare so they can go to school or work and have a work-life balance. Buongiorno. <laughs> Bonjour. Hello. Um, welcome to this panel on speeding up economic uh, uh, empowerment for women through law, mainly, and other means. I know we're the last panel before lunch, <clears throat> so I want to ensure that you participate as audience with us so that uh, you can burn some calories and have bigger lunch. That works? Um, so it's a, my name is Christiane Bergevin. I'll serve as the moderator. I'm from Montreal in Canada. And as my bio was not in, in the little booklet, I'd say that other than my professional affiliation, uh, I've been all my life working in financing projects worldwide, investing in companies, M&A. And uh, also, I'm a professional director. And I did chair the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and implemented the first ever diversity agenda for board and for management. Uh, as a deal maker, I know one thing. When there's an opportunity to make a deal, you have to do it, and it shouldn't take 100 years for women empowerment. Uh, it's an honor to chair the panel, and allow me to thank uh, very much uh, Chiara Corazza, uh, and to praise her leadership in making the Women's Forum a key element to advance women empowerment worldwide, including to the G20 barometer. So, Chiara, kudos to you, merci. Uh, I'm joined today by a, an amazing panel that covers the world from Europe to Africa to Asia. And without any further duty, I'd like to introduce uh, my, my colleagues. Uh, so on uh, my left is uh, Gianu, Giovanna Galli, who um, is a leadership advisor and leads Spencer Stewart Financial Service Practice and Board Practice in Europe, Middle East, and uh, Africa. Uh, on her, my uh, extreme left is Marie-Pierre Rixin, who's a uh, communicator by background and who's introduced a world premiere, uh, which is a proposed law in France to also regulate uh, the percentage of women in executive teams, and she'll tell us more about this. Bonjour, Marie-Pierre. Uh, on uh, my right, coming from all the way from Indonesia, is uh, Yesi Yosetia, who's Director, Chief Strategy Transformation and IT Officer for a company called PT Excel Axiata. It's $2 billion communication. Uh, and they connect 57 million people in Indonesia. That's more than the population of Canada, just to put this in perspective. She is also actively promoting women leadership in G20 Empower. And next year, obviously, Indonesia is the host of the G20. Correct. Welcome, Yesi. Uh, and uh, last but not least is Alessia Mosca, who is an adjunct professor of science post, uh, the secretary general of the Italia ASEAN Association and member of the board of Crédit Agricole, one of the leading cooperatives worldwide, uh, the, Paris, the French, uh, French uh, co-op. Uh, she's a former member of the Italian and European parliament and she has a name, she has her name on a law, which is the Golfo Mosca law that set the precedent in Italy for, uh, for uh, governance uh, uh, parity uh, in companies. So that's a panel. Uh, we would like to engage audience in this panel, as I mentioned. So we'll start with intro comments and we'll move to you knowing there are many influential people from public policy, from private sector, and from politics. But as, a, as, a, as an initial word, because what gets measured gets done and influence the context, I'm sure you've seen the G20 barometer study, 
which said that 50%, over 50% of people worldwide uh, in the respondents that were surveyed in the G20 countries think it would be very difficult to achieve parity for women. But the other 50% thought it was possible, but it would take 26 years. So our objective here is to make that time much shorter. It was also 85%, eight out of 10 respondents felt that women can contribute a lot and there should be equal opportunities. So for all of those in public policy, in law, here's your basis, eight of 10 persons surveyed in the G20 countries think there's room to do more and a lot faster. On this, I'll turn to you, Giovanna, and because you work with clients across the world, tell us, is the fact that some countries have, have advanced on on, on board governance, and there's, there's also media publicity on the benefits of diversity. Is it enough? Is it getting your client to, uh, to consider a different agenda to empower women? Thank you. <clears throat> well, first of all, I think without quotas, we would have a completely different conversation today. So uh, if we look at data, because as you said, what is not measured uh, uh, is difficult to, uh, to be assessed. Without quotas, uh, um, countries have reached, on average, 10% diversity uh, on boards. While if you look at you know, um, those countries within the G20 where either there have been a compulsory indication from uh, the policy makers, or in very few um, situations, uh, um, a coordinated moral situation uh, efforts among association or regulators, uh, those countries have progressed much faster and much more. But because we like data, um, data needs to be interpreted. So when we say that the, the, uh, that the uh, quota regulation have brought the uh, ratio at 30%, we need to look what the women uh, have done in, uh, in these boards. Look at the chairman. Only 10% on average women have chairmanship role. If we look at the uh, CEO numbers, it's depressing. There are very few women that have raised to the CEO level. Why? Because actually the obligation, the policy uh, making at board level has not been transmitted uh, in the executive committee or in the C-suite uh, uh, level. And this is because of many different reasons. First of all, uh, you know, with the quotas, uh, uh, we have created the, the demand, but not necessarily the supply. So if you look at the profiles of women on boards, we find many professors, many lawyers, but we find very few executive women because actually we have not created the pipeline. So my first point is that this is a cultural change, requires time, requires the pipeline to be built because we don't want to compromise on competencies. And by the way, this cannot only happen if policy makers, and Mary Pierre, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're uh, here for this reason, not only if policy makers have pushed this change, we need to have investors pushing the change. Look at what happened. Two years ago, Larry Fink, who many of you will know, uh, one of the, uh, you know, the founder of the largest asset manager in the world, said, we're not gonna invest in uh, companies unless they have a cert certain diversity ratio. And everybody has started to focus yeah. on diversity yeah. ratio. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, this is a business priority. So investors, policy makers, the boards have a big role to play. And by the way, when, we, when it comes to boards, let's not forget that boards appoint CEOs. So in the, they need to profile very well the type of CEO that they want, because the CEO will then set the tones in the organization. Yeah, you're make sure that the executive committee, you know, will watch the talk. Well, great points, and that's a great segue for you, Marie-Pierre, to tell us France is a champion now on board governance at 45%. So has the landscape evolved, and does it evolve on the leadership side as well? So um, good morning, every, everyone. Thank you, uh, Christian. Maybe um, to begin, uh, I would like to, um, 
to, uh, to say that uh, we don't like quotas, in fact. But without quotas, we don't have wizards. And uh, you know, uh, maybe um, the sentence which is the more current when we uh, speak about quotas, uh, when you have opposants, is we don't find women. But when the Cope Zimmerman law uh, was um, adopted 10 years ago, uh, there, there were only 10% uh, of women on boards in France. Now there are 46. So there, of course, was a lot of uh, women who were very competent and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be uh, on, on board. So maybe um, also uh, say uh, that um, uh, of course, the law uh, was uh, very uh, debated, uh, but uh, she, it has a large shift, um, the goals it set. Now there are 46 uh, of uh, directors, of women directors mm -hmm. sitting on the executive boards. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the trickle down effect um, is not here. And uh, we, uh, we need women on uh, executive uh, committees also. So now we, have, uh, we, have, we need a second step. Uh, women uh, only represent 70.5 of executive uh, committees in France. Um, and uh, we need to break in the, you know, the, the glass selling also because uh, executive committees is not like boards. Uh, the, 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 it's not of the, the same persons. And the glass ceiling uh, have to change, of course, and uh, we have to boot the careers of uh, all women. So uh, I uh, propose uh, uh, a new bill, uh, which I hope will be uh, definitely uh, adopted uh, in the last of year, and uh, which introduced uh, gender quotas on uh, the executive teams and the uh, leadership uh, pipelines, of course, pipelines of companies, not only uh, on mm -hmm. executive committees, over 100 people. The target is 30% uh, uh, of um, women in 2027 and 40% in 2030. Um, the quotas uh, are effective and uh, we need them. And it works. Well, what a champion. <laughs> Um, turning now to Alessia Mosca, you followed in the footsteps of, of France on the governance side 10 years ago. Tell us more about what's the landscape now in Italy and are you ready for more legislation? Perhaps? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I want to thank uh, uh, Chiara and the Women's Forum because after many months, uh, finally we can meet and I could meet uh, um, friends uh, and uh, moreover, we, we have followed very interesting debate. So thank you very much for uh, this, uh, this opportunity. Um, uh, yes, uh, what, uh, what happened 10 years ago after a few months uh, uh, of the introduction of the Copé Zimmerman in France, uh, also Italy adopted uh, the Golf for Mosca law. And uh, I want to underline the fact that uh, what uh, uh, the figures that we have uh, today were unconceivable 10 years ago because we were the last country in Europe for women in board, on boards. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 we were uh, at around 6% 10 mm -hmm. years ago, and now we are nearly 40%, so after only 10 years. Uh, so it, we, we, really, uh, we really have done a, a, a leap forward, a, a, an incredible uh, step forward uh, in, this, uh, in this direction. And uh, um, uh, the quality of uh, the boards uh, in parallel increased. So this is also to be said, uh, we did not only um, uh, we did not only raise the number of women, but uh, all the studies, uh, all the international experts say that uh, the governance in itself uh, was uh, um, uh, increased uh, dramatically. Um, this has been a success, yes, definitely, uh, but 
this could also be a risk because someone can say that uh, we are fed up in uh, uh, talking about uh, quotas because everything already has been done in Italy. This is not, uh, this is not true, not only for executive, board, the executive committees and uh, executive roles in general, but if we look just beyond the perimeter of the law, we, we, can, we can see a completely different situation. Just have a look to small and medium-sized enterprises, family business, consultancies, or very big companies which are not listed. And the situation there, we, there very little progress have, have been done. So I think that uh, we, uh, it's, it's true, and I want to follow the points, Giovanna's and Marie Pierre's points, it's true that uh, something uh, has been done, but we need to move ahead, and we don't uh, and we don't stop now. We need to move ahead because we need to <coughs> widen the scope um, of uh, of the legislation. And again, my last point: uh, uh, it's important to underline your point, Mario Pierre. Uh, quotas are not an end in themselves. Quota as only a mean to put diversity on the table. And we, as women and the men that are in this new governance on the board, need to put diversity on the table. We are facing huge challenges, but also in governance, we are facing challenges. And it's important that we put this diversity. And quotas are only a mean to faster the process but uh, we need to think about uh, which is our long-term strategy, to live without quotas and to have a real diversity, a real parity uh, in all the level of our society. Thank you, Alessia. <laughs> now, turning to you, Yessi, um, do you think legislation is a tool that is, is needed and can be used in Indonesia? And are there other means, knowing of how large is your country and, and now the transformation is fast? Yes, coming from uh, two developed countries, now uh, going to developing countries, right? So uh, mandating quota uh, acts in a, as an affirmative action uh, to ensure uh, that there are really representative of uh, women in the executive level. And as Marie-Pierre or Alicia uh, said, right, so um, it has numerous pro, and, and we can also see the experience, real experience from both uh, France and um, Italy. Now, um, in Indonesia context, right, Indonesian government actually has started to put um, the initiative. So, like, um, I would like to share, like, two things. One is that there is a special ministry that is looking after women and also uh, child protection. The other one is that there's also already a law uh, uh, passed in 2008 and uh, another one in 2011 that is mandating 30% uh, of uh, female parliament. But uh, then the question is that what happened to the private sector? What happened to the executive as, as we are talking here, right? Uh, I believe that it will take time for us until we are able to pass uh, or mandating the uh, gender quota law uh, for the private sector. So, and we cannot just stop and doing nothing. Uh, so what uh, we are doing, and this is also aligned with um, uh, the alliances in Empower G20 uh, um, that, that we are going to host next year, uh, there are uh, two things that is prominent. One is uh, measure the KPI. So in Indonesia's context, uh, we are trying, although it's not mandated, but we are uh, trying to put up uh, transparencies for all the uh, uh, corporations to show what is the amount of uh, uh, female leaders. Um, and then uh, the other one, uh, still under the Empower G20, is that pipelining. Um, Alicia mentioned a bit about how important pipelining is, right? So, uh, and that triggers to uh, the program that uh, the company I work for uh, is doing. Uh, how to uh, use a digital platform to start increasing the uh, understanding about uh, the importance of uh, women in the, in the leadership. 
So I give you a real life example, uh, Christian. So one is that um, uh, in Indonesia, uh, uh, as uh, uh, she was saying, we've got 270 million people. Uh, more than 60% of our, um, our archipelago is actually maritime. And uh, we have a, a program for fishermen. Uh, that is not, because most of our fishermen, which is like two million of them, is still uh, finding the fish. It's not catching the fish. So um, being uh, or working in the, in the technology, now we are able to use uh, a bit of analytics, AI a bit, right, to start locating the fish by following where the plankton is. Right? So we are trying, and then we are trying to educate our fishermen on how to catch the fish rather than finding the fish. So when we are educating this to the fishermen villages, we saw the housewife, we saw the women that uh, doesn't have any access to information at all. So we turn our program not only to help the fishermen, but also the women in the village by uh, uh, giving them a, uh, a means for uh, getting information. And boy, right? Knowledge is, or information is power, right? By them now getting an access to information, they know, they know more. And they can do that to uh, sort of like increase their uh, productivity level as well. So uh, I think the point is that although uh, we are still uh, absent in terms of uh, the law in mandating quota, but there are still other ways for us to yes. do something about it and uh, uh, not just, not just uh, uh, doing nothing. I think that's, that's, the, that's the point. Thank you, Yesi. And, and before we turn to the room, that leads me to say, well, digital can be an enabler. And in your environment, and Marie-Pierre, you know, going with this world premiere law, how is the environment? Are people uh, clapping and applauding the initiative? Are the media supportive? What are the key elements, or, or is it difficult? Um, first of all, as I think, you know, in, in fact, the, the law uh, was adopted in, a, in a assembly uh, with unanimity. But the unanimity was built with everyone. And I think my colleagues um, understood that our future, uh, future growth needs uh, women uh, in different fields, and um, in particular in male sectors, technology, uh, la logistics, uh, as we saw uh, yesterday, um, a lot of fields uh, need uh, need uh, women today, and uh, they understand also that society and newer generations uh, don't want to uh, to wait uh, many and many years to uh, to uh, don't have any uh, economic gender gap, and maybe um, also. Uh, say that you have a lot of uh, benefits for uh, women, for companies, and for society and our economy. For women, when you have more uh, women in executive committees, you have more equal, equal pay, you have more executive responsibilities, you are more motivated, motivating factor uh, for women in the company and for their professional uh, development. For companies, you have also um, growth, and uh, you have also um, uh, a return of equity is better, you know, 47% uh, for companies who have uh, women in their executive committees. And also for countries, uh, you, our growth is, um, is, uh, needs women, and when uh, gender equality is impl implemented, uh, you, you have 9.4% uh, uh, additional uh, growth uh, in, in, the, in this country. So we need uh, women. And maybe also um, to, to, to say that uh, we need also um, different step, you know. We don't need just a low uh, which say in 10 years ago, we need uh, women in your, uh, in your uh, executive committees. We have to build pipeline uh, with different steps. Uh, and we have to, for instance, to publish uh, the, the, the gender balance in uh, executive committees every year. It's uh, 
one thing I want in my, in my, uh, in my bill, and I think it's absolutely necessary for companies uh, to see and to measure uh, the, the, the progress yes. of, their, uh, of their development. Now that's a very good point, and before we turn to the audience, the ESG, Environmental Social Governments Framework, does it lead your clients, Giovanna, to ask you to broaden the pipeline when you do search? This is interesting. <clears throat> First of all, you know, communication is a big part of what uh, CEOs tell to the market. So ESG and diversity are like the key topics that everybody likes to, uh, to talk about. But let's be very careful to what we call pink washing. Uh, because diversity is nice to talk about quotas and diversity initiatives and all this. At the end of the day, the change starts from the top. So we need to have, you know, my proposal in a, in a slightly provocatory way is to say, why don't we have an executive diversity index? Let's ensure diversity at the top level of the organization. Let's make sure that while we build the succession, we also push the leaders up, because we do have lots of talented women in the organization, and they can raise up. You know, I heard uh, in these two days that quite a few people said women are not assertive, they're not brave enough. No way, this is not true. Women are dressed with uh, words that are different from the way we describe men. We say that a man is, a, is assertive, but a woman can be aggressive. We say that a, a man is decisive, and the woman is opinionated. This is culture, and you probably remember one of the famous quote was, culture is a strategy for breakfast. So this is a cultural change. ESG actually can be a very good way to converge the diversity uh, into, into an index, uh, because ECG is becoming a way to talk to the investors to make sure that there are, you know, um, uh, uh, KPIs monitored uh, on a quarterly basis then reported to the market. So at the end of the day, diversity is uh, one uh, work stream of this uh, uh, um, revised policy, and ESG is, uh, is also part of it, um, that needs to be treated as a business priority, not as an initiative. It's a business priority with clear KPIs, CEOs need to um, empower and reward the leaders that actually become accountable to make it happen, not in 10 years, starting from tomorrow. And I like your proposal about executive diversity executive. index. Um, turning now to the room, I'm sure that uh, some of you have questions, suggestions, or, or, or ideas for a panel. Um, yes. Yes. Hello, this is uh, Marika Calabrese. Let me share a comment here. Uh, I think quotas are a tool, but they're a danger also, because we passed from we have no woman to uh, she was appointed because she's a woman. This is the most, the, the, I'm sorry, the biggest danger we have to face. So let me just share a wish. I wish my daughter we live in a world where we have no quotas because there is no need for that. So this is my, just a comment I wanted to share. Alicia, you have, uh, you have an answer to this, knowing that you had 6% board diversity in your country. Our quota, can our <laughs> yeah, this, is exactly, it, this is exactly the same wish that I have for yeah. my yeah. daughter yeah. And, my, and my son, because uh, I would like that uh, we live in a condition where we don't, uh, we don't need uh, these constraints. The reality is that uh, at this moment, uh, for sure 10 years ago, but today still, uh, if we look at the figures that we have, uh, without uh, a push, without a constraint, uh, if we leave uh, the change uh, alone, uh, without uh, pushing a little bit, uh, the, this change would be too, really too, too slow uh, to, uh, to see uh, that uh, f for the next generation to see uh, a real, uh, a real uh, different dynamic. So for this reason, we are advocating now for something more. And I conv I'm convinced also the, to the, of, of the fact that uh, laws and regulation are, are not the only tool that we have in our toolbox. And we really need a, an all-in initiative because 
other things are needed. Uh, we, we need, uh, we need uh, to enforce uh, the, uh, the legislation that we have. And what Giovanna was saying just uh, two minutes before, um, uh, the ESG regulation and all the requirements that the European Commission is introducing now very strongly on environment uh, could be introduced also for the social, for the S, and for diversity. And this is something on which the European Central Bank, for example, is working on uh, for, uh, for uh, the um, uh, reporting requirements for, for big banks all over Europe. And I think this is something very good. A few days ago in Italy, a new law has been introduced working a lot on reporting in line with what the European, uh, the European Commission and the European Central Bank is doing. So I think that also this type of enforcement, which are not constrained, but is a, a way of helping the management and the top level to go in the same direction. So I think that if we are in the mindset that we really need an all-in uh, initiative, uh, that uh, then I am uh, op uh, optimistic of the fact that uh, we can live without quota very, very soon. And do you think, yes, see that uh, you have probably about 130 million women in your country. Almost that, half, half, correct. Yes, correct. Uh, and therefore, uh, is, it, is, is the media, are women as well known? Because we wouldn't need quota if women talent was, was known and recognized. So do you think that the media attention is, is sufficient? So uh, unfortunately, Christian, at this point in time, I don't think that we covered the, uh, the news or the information about uh, women enough, right? Uh, if you if you read the news, if you read the social media, it's always uh, amplifying things uh, that is catching our eyes, uh, uh, except that how women will actually be a uh, uh, a better leader or or uh, 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 better in in terms of in, in the corporations. But um, I would like to add a bit on uh, what Alicia mentioned earlier, uh, Christian. Right. So, uh, legislation is not only the, the only, uh, the only uh, thing in our toolbox, I completely agree with her, because there are other things uh, such as uh, preparing for the future skills. As I'm in the, as I'm in the uh, working in the technology area, I also understand that what sort of skill that is needed for the uh, 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 executive, and in this case, a female executive, uh, in this uh, very uh, uh, volatile world that we're living in, uh, the uh, skill that is most needed is actually mastery of change. And, and nobody is better doing that rather than female leader, right? I mean, in all our life, we've got like so many episodes that require us to change from one to the other, and that is the ingredients for us to be the executive. Not, uh, uh, not only that, but also uh, the things that was uh, uh, briefly discussed in the other panel, uh, such as uh, STEM, such as the ability to lead STEM unit. Because sometimes you don't need to be in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, the expert of the STEM subject, but you need to be able to lead people in the STEM area. So I've just that, added that's that. That's a very good point. Uh, do, yes? Please give your name, that's always a good to do. Well, hi, this is Sonia Ruiz from the Consultancy on, of Sustainability in OIMA, based in Barcelona. We work internationally. And of course, quotas open the doors. Uh, transparency and accountability uh, give credit of what the company is doing. And in this sense, I believe what Alessia mentioned, the new uh, sustainability corporate directive that the EU is presenting as it's preparing right now, it's going to lead us towards this direction. Also taxonomy, a strong uh, claim or call for action that the S includes uh, uh, gender equal governance at the at, uh, at highest level. But uh, also an observation, which kind of positions, when once we achieve those positions, which kind of responsibilities do we have? Make sure that the quotas are equal to positions which have the budget and have the decision-making yes. power. Yes. yes. Yes, that's yes, yes. And, and perhaps you <laughs> That's a very good point. And yeah. uh, it goes back to quotas in the board. You put women in the board, but then they're not chairman of committees, they're not chairman of the board, so you do not empower women. And again, at the executive level, we need to make sure that women takes 
positioned transversally, not always in the staff functions, which are easier, but don't have the lever to have an impact on the business. So you're absolutely right. And by the way, uh, when, uh, the lady before you was talking about quota. Yeah, we don't like quota. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that the assessment in the, in the, in the companies are made on objective ways. And the best ones get, get the job. And I'm sure that if we just focus on competencies, we are going to reach 50-50 much sooner than, than we all believe. But we need to make it objective rather than subjective. Yeah, absolutely. And I see Mary Pierre, you're thinking about No, no. Your... <laughs> Maybe uh, to say also that, you know, the talent of women is always asked, but uh, never uh, men's uh, talent. So uh, we, we, if, if you have um, a woman on, on a board or an executive woman, maybe she will be there because she's a woman, but she will be there because she's talent. And she, she brings uh, diversity, she brings uh, something to, to the companies uh, that another uh, man uh, couldn't bring to the company. So I think it's very uh, important. And maybe to say also that, you know, in France, we don't have quota in uh, French uh, National Assembly, but uh, President Macron wants, uh, wanted uh, quota, quotas for his party in, in, uh, in National Assembly. So maybe I'm a women quota, but I think I do my job and mm -hmm. I, I hope and I know that all my women colleagues, all parties, uh, from all parties uh, do, their, do their job uh, with talent. I think you're a, a woman mover and shaker. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen, you have a... Yes. Yes, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Bonjour, Mariana, Bonjour. Quebec delegate. Moi, je, in, in moi aussi, je suis Canadienne, je viens du Québec. Je représente le Québec ici en Italie. Piacere di, di salutarvi questa mattina. I do have a comment. I'd like to pick up on something. And my comment is for the younger crowd. So, yes, we have the skills, the mastery of change, and they need us on the board, and yes, we have quotas, and, and yes, we have the competencies. But let's remember, when we're named on that board, to keep being women. Let's not try to compete with the men and do what the men do. I, we bring those skills, and let's just work with those skills. Let's not try to do what the men are doing because we're great at what we're doing. And I'm just saying this from past experience. I remember my first board, I tried to imitate the boys on, on the board, it didn't work. We have to be and put forward our talents. That's why we're there, to be different and diverse. We can't compete That's on what they're doing. We have to bring new talent. It's my comment. Thank you, Mariana. <laughs> Very good comment. Um, one topic which we haven't discussed, how important is it to pass law, to change, to bring change, to have alliance, with men who are also mover and shaker? Oh, it's, it's key uh, in the sense that uh, um, um, in my experience, uh, uh, it's always important to have a huge, a, a, a large alliance uh, to, uh, um, uh, to uh, make things happen in the sense that uh, uh, you need, uh, in the assemblies, uh, uh, you need a majority and uh, you need to create uh, a big alliance and that's uh, in terms of numbers. Second, in terms of culture, because if you, really, if you really want that something is a game changer within the society and it is a structural change, you need to create alliance with all the players, all the stakeholders, and you need to engage everybody. So it's really important not to, to, uh, to, uh, to create ghettos, uh, because the, the, the critical thing now is uh, uh, that we need to execute. I've heard this term uh, in many of the panel the, in uh, these two days. Execution is what we need now to, uh, to make things uh, moving. Execution uh, is less exciting uh, than innovation, is less thrilling than innovation, but it's what is needed now. So if you want to execute, Everybody needs to execute, and since still men are the majority in the top position, so we really, we really need them to execute, uh, and we want to have the broader alliance possible to do that. And great comment, and as a final, I think it needs a round of applause for Alessia. 
leads me to, we have, a, there's a, a women's forum call to action that will be sent to the G20 leaders. So each in your own country, in your own market. What is, uh, is this legislation, are you, what has to be recommended in terms of legal support to make us uh, Yes, for Italy, okay. for Italy, I would say that education should be our obsession. Uh, it, this is not the same for other countries because uh, on that figures uh, are completely different. But for Italy, the, the huge gap that we are now facing is on education. And so this should be an obsession. I want to stop and uh, conclude my intervention only um, mentioning one uh, personal anecdote. Still in 2021, my uh, daughter book uh, describing scientists, uh, nine years old, uh, describing Describing sightings uh, depicted uh, a, a page with uh, nine uh, pictures, all men. And this uh, is uh, more powerful than anything else uh, to reinforce stereotype, stereotype in education. So I think that this uh, should be our obsession to change uh, starting from uh, five years old uh, and uh, start from there to completely change uh, uh, our society. And education so supported by legislation, right? To bring that. Thank you. What about you, yes? So mm -hmm. I would, I mean, completely agree with, with Alicia, right? I think uh, uh, Indonesia also put a very big uh, or very high priority in terms of education. Even our president in his second term is really focusing on how to elevate the, the education um, uh, uh, even higher. But again, uh, with the scale that we have, it's, it's really a challenge to uh, make sure that everybody has the uh, equal education. So uh, I would also uh, would like to say that it's all uh, going to start with us. We are, we are somebody's uh, mother, we are somebody's sister, we are somebody's uh, daughter, right? So, so uh, even our thinking, our, our um, position needs to also be understood. So uh, the male counterparts, the, the ally that we need uh, for the uh, for, for this movement also understand, because without that, uh, then we will not um, start. So, so we cannot uh, only rely on the government, although that is a, a very big, a very big, uh, but, but I think it all started with And that's why well. you're involved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Yesi. Key action, legislation, more legislation. I think it's a coordinated effort between policymakers, investors, and, uh, and corporations, public and private. We need to have uh, more diversity uh, at the top, at the executive level. Diversity is not about gender only, it's about races, it's about age. We need to open up to talents uh, in, different, uh, in different clusters. So, um, you know, my dream is that we meet again in, in 10 years, not in 20, in 10 years, and we will discuss about something else because we, are, <laughs> we will be 50-50. <laughs> And your law will bring this. Of course. And maybe in France, of course, I agree with education and uh, uh, what, you, what you say. But maybe in France it will be um, individual taxation. Uh, because uh, we have to consider women as uh, economic subject uh, themselves. And um, if she they occupy uh, second place in economy and in corporations and in business. Maybe it's, uh, it's because uh, we don't have, you know, uh, our own taxation. So I think it's very important to have uh, individual, individual taxation. taxation in France. Yes. Oh, that's a very good point. So on this note, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say uh, that we hope with this recommendation and the recommendation of the G20 that we can fast track uh, a, an economic empowerment for women. And as Madame Sabatini said yesterday, uh, for women are not a minority in society. So it's not about inclusion, it's not a minority, it's about empowerment. And I'd like to paraphrase Madeleine Albright, but in a different way. I think there's a special place for men who help women, and that's in paradise. So thank you very much, and have a great lunch. Oh, we have to have the, the picture taken, right? So that's the official picture. Sorry, everyone. I just wanted to advise that uh, if you go outside at the main polyhab, there's lunch ready. Um, 
c'è subito fuori dal, dall'aula Guido De Carlisen, uscite.